Today we're checking out the Roypel lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate battery. This is marine specific and this one is designed for trolling motors. We're going to tear it apart because the documentation is pretty bad. It has a communication port, but I don't see anything about it in the manual. So first red flag is RoyPowUSA.com is not a secure website. They do not have an SSL certificate. And they claim to have 8,000 people working for them in 1,035 patents, but their website is not secure. That just does not make any sense to me. 450 R&D engineers and you guys can't hire some like college kid to fix your website? That's just nuts. They have some nice batteries actually. Wow, they have these golf cart batteries for replacing the lead acid and they look really nice. Now on the front and the back of the battery, there's mounting holes and they have stainless steel inserts, which is really nice, especially for a marine environment. Now on the top of the battery, we have a main negative and a main positive. And these are the communication ports, the on and off switch and a Bluetooth light. And on the top, we have a vent valve, but it doesn't say in the manual what it does. I'm guessing it's an overpressure relief valve of some sort or something for moisture. And I just realized it has an internal heating function for cold temperatures, but they really need to make it more obvious or put it on the side of the battery. This manual is just awful. Um, it doesn't tell you anything about these communication ports or how to use them. So let's actually open it up now and see what's inside. Wow, wow, this is a nice freaking battery. Holy cow, this is really nice. What the heck for that price? I thought this thing was going to be complete garbage. I am always wrong with my assumptions. Look at this thing. This is the same quality as a Valance battery and it's their own BMS, Roy Pow. And it doesn't look like other BMSs on the market and other batteries we've opened. So that is crazy. So over here is the balance cable that connects to the cells. And these are the communication cables over here. We have not had this quality of a battery for a while. Also, the communication ports are potted and there is a rubber seal around the top of the lid. And every wire is labeled. And the main supply conductors are actually covered with this wrap stuff, which is really nice. So first, let's disconnect this lid and the BMS from the battery cells because this stuff inside here, this is battery porn. It is beautiful inside this battery. So first, these two wires go to the internal heating pads. So let's remove those. Next, there are two balance cables on both sides, so let's disconnect those next. Now we need to remove the main positive and the main negative cables. And they are very tight. And now it is completely off. That was only six cables in under a minute. That is nice. Who is this company? We need to look up their other batteries. These are beautiful. And these have been tightened down really good too. I feel like this is a scam because it's so nice for the price. It doesn't even make sense to me. We've never seen this quality at this price point ever. Now these bolts are what hold these packs to the case and they look great. There's even some Loctite on the bottom. Are they glued in there? Uh oh. There is glue at the bottom. What a bummer. Oh, there we go. This one has a ton of this sticky stuff. So we have some glue, but it seems like this side did not dry all the way, but these screws hold the packs into the bottom of the case. Check out this build quality, you guys. We have not had this nice of a battery on the channel for a very long time. So these cells are held together with these metal straps and they are covered by heat shrink, which is good because they're touching the cells. Also, the cells are protected between each other with this rubber material and it looks perfect. Like how it's aligned between each cell is so uniform across the whole battery. Next, these cells are held together with these pieces of aluminum connected to these straps, but the cells are protected with this sticker and it is made for this battery because there's even indentations where it folds and it looks perfect. On this side, you have the internal heating pad. Next, the bus bars underneath them, there is foam and then protective vinyl on top. 
Now these aluminum bus bars are welded to the raw terminals of the cells. And the balance lead I think is welded, but they're using a very strong and hard glue where it attaches to the bus bar. And then if you follow this wire over here, it goes to the temperature sensor right here. And the other pack looks perfect, just like the first pack. This pack has two temperature sensors and this one only has one. I was wrong, this one has two as well. So this battery has four temperature sensors to assess the temperature of the cells. The only other batteries we've tested with four or five temperature sensors is server rack batteries and Valance medical equipment batteries. So this is like the first marine grade environment battery that actually has a lot of temperature sensors. So very impressive. Let's put it back together and actually test it out. These the same? That's scary. So you can plug it into the wrong one if you don't know what you're doing. If you look at the Chinese characters, it matches up with this one. So you have to check that. Yeah, these Chinese characters match as well. So that's the one you should plug in. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I smell smoke. I destroyed something. Yeah, it let out the smoke. No! That means we can't test it! This is awful! I connected a power supply and it's not charging at all, which is pretty obvious why. This is not the first time, but I'm gonna get another one of these because this might be my new favorite marine grade battery. This kind of quality for the price is unheard of. I've never seen this in my entire life. This is just crazy. I'm gonna ask for more batteries from them. I'm gonna test every battery that they have. You know, something to mention is obviously the BMS is fried because I switched the two balance cables. I read the Chinese and I matched them up, but I found out that that's not the way it's supposed to go. You wanna mismatch them. Also, typically when you have two balance cables connected to a BMS, they will be a different size, so you won't mix them up, such as on Overkill Solar BMS. But on this one, they're the exact same plug and you can easily mix them up. So this is not a user serviceable design for beginners. You will destroy the whole battery if you made the mistake that I made. But that's the way things actually Maybe I switched these two packs and that's why the balance leads don't match up. Gosh, dang it, that's why. Because I matched them up, that would make total sense. So yeah, I switched these two batteries and I got the improper balance leads and then it did not work. What a bummer. Now, unfortunately, we have to wait until we get a replacement battery to make more videos. Um, I'm not gonna test just the raw cells and see if they pull full capacity. Considering the build quality, I'm pretty sure everything will work, but the manual is awful. It doesn't even mention what protocol it uses for communication. It doesn't even mention that there's two communication ports. Um, so yeah, I have no idea. I'm like riding in the dark here. So I'm gonna tell them with the bat next battery that they send out to make a better manual. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video and there will be more to come. So about two weeks later, we have another battery from Roy Pal, but they have a different name for their cheaper batteries. This is the Power Eurus. And obviously we all think about a Lamborghini Eurus, but yeah, this is their battery name. Now they claim that this is made by Roy Powell, but it looks very different than the first battery they sent. We've seen this battery case on lots of other budget lithium iron phosphate batteries. Why did they not make a special case for it like this battery right here? So I'm wondering if this is just a relabeled cheap lithium iron phosphate battery, like a clone of a Chins or an Ampere Time, or does it have this type of build quality inside? We've seen this case on a lot of batteries and sometimes we get lucky with a good battery but typically this case is like a red flag. It means that it's a budget battery. So we're gonna test it and see what's inside and see if it actually pulls full capacity and some other cool stuff. So first let's try charging it up to 100%. And the max charging current is only 50 amps. So yeah, this BMS is somewhat limited in that regard. I finally got a fluke clamp meter. How cool is this? We have 49 amps going into the battery. And with the max charging current, you can charge it in two hours. Most other batteries can charge in one hour. Whoa, this battery is $430. And it has Bluetooth? No way. Let's try the Bluetooth. Holy cow, that's cheap. I can't find the app, but I did find Roypo's app. So let's see if that one works. Oh, there we go. This is a nice app. It shows four temperature sensor readings. Yeah, check it out. Isn't this nice? 
So it states that the state of charge is very low, but it might be because it's the first cycle. Sometimes they're at 50%, they slap the BMS on there, and it shows 0%, but it will recalibrate once it hits 100%. And I really like this interface. Also, the shunt states that the actual capacity is 104 amp hours. Now based on this app and the amount of temperature sensors, it might not be a cheap clone. It might actually have one of their BMSs that they use in their NICE batteries or something else because this is not the same as the other ones. Also, the voltage differential between the cells is ridiculously low. I don't know if it actually is that low because it shows 0.001 volts. Um, the highest I've seen is 0.002 volts. And that's a good sign, but it's not telling us that much. So we need to do a capacity test to know if these cells are actually matched properly. But so far, so good. We'll come back in like an hour when this is fully charged. We still have one amp going into the battery, so let's give it a second. The state of charge now shows 100%. And cell over voltage protection has been triggered. And the voltage differential is 0.007 at 100%, which is actually a very good sign. I wonder what cells they're using. That's nuts. And it states 104 amp hours of remaining capacity. Now we're going to do a capacity test to see if these figures are actually true. Now for this test to be accurate, we need to pull 20 amps and that would give us a 0.2C rate. With the current load, we're pulling exactly 20 amps. I don't think I've ever hit this exact number before. So we'll come back in five hours and see what our test results are. Five hours later and the test is done, but we need to wake the battery up with the power supply and see what the results are. 101 amp hours. So it passed the test, but it wasn't 104. Oh, it says 103 amp hours now. And it says it's at 0%. Voltage differential has gone up, so these are top balance cells. But it's still really good, 0 0.019, that's incredible. Also, you cannot change the settings for the BMS, which is great, especially for beginners. I get a lot of people that think that they know more than the electrical engineers, and they think that they're a DIY person that's gonna find a better way. Um, these voltage thresholds are fantastic, and you shouldn't touch them at all. The BMS disconnect on these systems should be a last resort for protecting the cells. You should manage the cycling bandwidth with the inverter and the absorption settings on your solar charge controller. So yeah, I'm so glad that you can't change the settings on here because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people thinking that they know what they're doing and not. So yeah, you shouldn't have to change anything in here. Even on the cheapest batteries, it's fine. Just leave the settings alone. Now we can actually do a teardown. So let's rip this thing apart. Jeez, that was a little difficult. My goodness. This is not easy to take apart like their other model. This is all rubber on the bottom of this battery. This is all glue. Look at this. And it smells so bad. Oh my God. That can't be good for my health. I don't like how the heat sink is covered by rubber and foam. I don't think that's a good idea. But they're using a Roy Pow BMS, so this is their own special battery. And the cells are configured in the same way as the more expensive battery. So first, let's test the low temperature charging protection. So this is peculiar. There's a temperature sensor right here and right here for the terminals. And then there's only two temperature sensors actually on the cells themselves. And those are right here and right here, which I've never seen before. And I think it's kind of silly unless the terminal likes to get hot and they thought that, hey, we should have temperature sensors there. But I've never seen that before. Typically, they're always on the cells or on the FETs or something that can actually overheat. So now we're charging and here's some ice. Let's see if it works. The temperature doesn't seem to be dropping or this thing's not updating fast enough. Yeah, I don't see the current. I need to restart the app. Now the app is working, but the temperature sensors only read that one of them is 2 degrees Fahrenheit less than the other temp sensors, which is not the case. Maybe this is only programmed for high temperature because it's attached to the terminal. Let's try high temperature instead. Oh, there we go. So yeah, high temperature only. Now this is the other terminal temperature sensor. Yeah, there we go. So these are only high temperature. Now this temperature sensor is on the cells, so we're gonna dip it in cold water and it has to pass this test. It needs to disconnect charging right when this gets cold. 
Oh, there we go. So the cell sensors do work for low temp charging. Now let's try high temperature and it works. Now the fourth sensor and this one's not working. So there's only one temperature sensor that does low temp charging protection, which is fine, but I wish they all did it. This even has conformal coating on a budget battery. That is very impressive. Usually at this price point, you do not get this quality at all. I hope they don't raise the prices because this is pretty nice. Oh, there's another bolt on the bottom. I cannot remove this BMS. Oh man, they really glued this thing together. <sighs> oh, there we go. Now I can reach the bolt. There is so much glue in this thing, it's crazy, look at that. This is not user serviceable. If you wanna change the BMS, there's no way. And I just realized that this wire powers the BMS, so if you wanna disconnect it, it's like a server rack battery. They could use this to put an on and off switch on the top of the battery. That was a lot of work. So I'm not as impressed with this battery as the first battery, but it's very cheap. For the price, considering its build quality, this is up against chins and ampere times, this beats all of them. This has low temp charging protection. Even though it's one temperature sensor, it still works. Next, their BMS is built in-house with Bluetooth, and that works as well. Next, the build quality on the top of the cells with the bus bars and the connections are flawless. Next, it pulled full capacity and everything actually works. Now the downsides, the foam on the heat sink, if you're doing a prolonged duration discharge uh, test with you know maximum amperage with like 100 amps, this is not ideal. This thing's gonna get really hot and there's another temperature sensor on the FETs right here and it's gonna shut down. It might be hard to do and I haven't tested it, but but typically these get pretty warm and you don't want to put an insulative material over something that gets hot. Next, the rubber is very messy and personally I do not like it because I had to tear it apart, but it seems to do its job well. It's insulative and it's absorbent so it can take impacts from the side. And the case is very deceiving. They're using the same case as other budget batteries. And by budget, I mean the cheapest ones on the market. It's crazy that they have this quality of components in a case that is so cheap. I wish you guys made it cool like this battery. Like this one is really nice. Um, I bet more people would buy it, but I understand this is the, your, your budget model. And yeah, for the price, it's actually very good. I'm very impressed. And rarely are we with the budget batteries, like even the cell holders and how this is configured. Um, there is nothing at this price point that compares. And the features of this BMS with multiple temperature sensors at this price point is again, unheard of. I don't know of anybody else making this nice of a battery at this price point. Now I'm gonna tell this company to send me out another one of these batteries cause I destroyed this one, but I actually like them. Um, they did pass every test that I thrown at them. Um, I really want to see how this powers a trolling motor or any motor. Um, that's a big test, you know, for any lithium iron phosphate battery. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a nice uh, setup here. Even the internal heaters on this one. Um, these are pretty good batteries. We need to keep an eye on this company. If they come out with a server rack battery, I'm going to be all over it. But uh, yeah, for a marine battery, it's not that bad. Very surprising. I was expecting a lot worse. Um, especially with that name Roy Pow in the unsecure website. I also noticed that their shop, that website is secure, but their main USA Roy Pow website is not secure. So yeah, I think we should check them out. I actually want to get their golf cart battery because I have a golf cart and I just put two server rack batteries in there a couple months ago, but it would be cool to see their conversion kit to lithium and test that out. And that's all I can think about for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below and what other batteries they make we should test because they've got some other cool stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.